Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me again uh, for our Real Moments Relationships Expressing Anointed Love. And in our last uh, uh, time together, I focus on what I call Teen Challenge. Uh, well, today I want to focus on Parent channel, Challenge. And uh, as I said, that when it comes to the Parent Challenge, a challenge can be an opportunity to excel and an invitation to engage in a contest. Well, parents, uh, we who uh, have authority over our teen, uh, if you have teenagers in your home and young adults and everything, uh, uh, this becomes a greatest, uh, one of the greatest tests of our faith and fellowship in the Lord because he becomes our greatest supporter in the process. Yes, God is on our side. God is with us uh, to help us to bring our children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, parents, uh, we have to find ways to exercise uh, what I call better listening skills. Sometimes our children will tell us when they're teens, you won't listen. And sometimes uh, we may fall short in that particular department because there's a lot of passion sometimes behind situations and uh, we want the best for them. And sometimes we may not listen to them as they would like for us to listen to them. Another skill we have to bring is lifestyle transparency. Uh, you know, I believe there are times the Holy Spirit will allow us to be very transparent with our children, especially when they're teens and stuff. Uh, Sometimes there are things that need to be shared uh, with children when they are, uh, they are growing up that perhaps happened in the past and they need that information rather than to wait until they are you know, in their 20s and then they hear about some that uh, man, it could devastate them and everything. Uh, so there are times we have to share what I call life, life uh, uh, style transparency and then we got to have love and discipline. Now, I'm not saying that we are to sit back and let children do whatever they want to do. If they want to act out of character, if they want to be rebellious, we just sit back there and do nothing. No, we have to make sure that we exercise what I call loving discipline. Well, when I talked to the teens in the last, last, last lesson, I raised some questions. I call it self-examining questions, and I want to raise some for us as parents. And these questions go something like this. What actions I may have taken or are taken that is uh, adding fuel to the fire? As a parent, uh, we have to ask ourselves, am I doing something uh, to uh, cause this situation uh, to be worse than what it, what it, all, what it is already is or whatever the case may be? And another one is, am I allowing, allowing my negative emotions to rule over me as a man or woman of faith? You know, we're not only the adult, but we're also people of faith, and we're also uh, supposed to be presenting before them uh, what uh, what Christ-like character is. That doesn't mean we're perfect now. I'm telling you, that doesn't mean I'm not trying to, uh, and, you know, put any pressure on you like you a failure because, you know, you missed the mark or whatever the case may be. Uh, but I think we need to focus on that. How can I show uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit in my actions or reactions uh, when I'm dealing with uh, my particular team. Another one is, who are the stakeholders and am I employing them in communication and cooperation in order to address the behavior of the team? You know, we used to talk about a village raising a kid. Well, we have to have people in our life that perhaps may have some influence. Uh, uh, they are, uh, they're, 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 the child's life is impacted by this person as well especially uh, for those who have teens who perhaps you're not married to their uh, 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 other parent or whatever the case may be, you got to be uh, able to develop the necessary communication uh, so you can be on the same team because the goal is is to help the teen to come through this season or this stage of their life. To help the teen come out of this time of whatever is causing them to act in such uh, rebellious ways and, and uh, with negative attitudes and disrespectful words and things. That, that has to stop. But it's great when everybody who has some role to play in that child's life is on the same team and out to uh, see the same thing carried out. Well, I have a story I want to share from the Bible with uh, the parents as well, or the guardians, or grandparents, or whoever may be uh, having to be responsible for that child or those children. 
is in Mark chapter 7, verse 24 and 30, and I'm going to paraphrase it. Uh, this mother presses in with her faith uh, and falls at the feet of Jesus in order to solicit his help with her daughter who was acting totally out of character. Uh, matter of fact, the Bible identified the, uh, identified the influencing uh, force in their child's life as an unclean spirit. However, because of her love and courage, uh, she did not allow her pride but humility to remain on course until she witnessed her daughter change come. Yes, she cried out to Jesus in faith. She exercised humility. Uh, uh, she used her faith. She, it was almost like she was praying or interceding on behalf of her daughter. Well, there's some wisdom I want to just leave with uh, us as parents when we're dealing with a teen that may be going through what I call a challenge. I know a lot of times we put the label rebellious spirit and rebellion is as the spirit of witchcraft and all this. And, uh, and I understand that and everything, but we don't want to go in to attack mode. We don't want to go in the mode where we even throwing scriptures at them to, you know, I mean, just kind of beat them with the Bible. No, we don't want to do that. And so we want to be sensitive. But here's some wisdom that you may want to consider. Let your spiritual witness be part of the relational practice for and with the child. In other words, begin to reach out to the child before uh, a crisis come or the child act out of character and have time where you pray with them. Ask them what's going on with them or you know, they got some relational uh, challenges or something going on with their, you know, school work or whatever. And begin to say, let us pray together. Grab hands, hold their hands and let them see that you have a spiritual uh, connection with them and you exercise that by praying with them, praying over them and everything. And also letting them know you know, I'm praying for you and sending them some time a text or some, some scriptures to encourage them now and everything. Another one is let your communication be soft, honest, genuine, with transparency as needed. Yes, uh, we don't have to feel like we got to talk to them as if though they're, uh, you know, not even human beings, but the Bible says soft answer turns away their anger. Sometimes you meet a person upset and all of a sudden you keep your speech or your tone at a certain level. I mean, oh, they, they just realize how, uh, how foolish they sound with all that screaming and yelling and everything. Another one is do not allow a need to control, dominate your actions or submit to it when it is coming from the child. See, sometimes we got to ask ourselves, do I just have to be in control? And then if you're dealing with a child that's in a rebellious state, that is a spirit of control. And you got to be able to know you got to have authority over that, recognize it, handle it spiritually. But you also have to handle it, recognize it. You got to let this child know who has the authority in this home. Yes, that's part of the love and discipline. And the last one is do not allow your own teen experience to be the rule to bring fear in raising your child. Sometimes parents, we got to be careful that we don't look back at how we were when we were teens and, and you know how uh, are some things that we did and everything and just let that come over our mind and let that rule and so we never trust our teens or we always thinking the negative or because we're looking back at our own lives and everything. We got to get rid of that and everything and and, and not allow that child to feel like because you did this or that happened in your life, I'm going to do the same thing. Well, the scripture I have to leave with you is Psalms 55, 22. It said, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be forsaken. I know you love your children. I know you care for them. But man, those cares can become weights and burdens when that child is in a state of rebellion and defiance and being disrespectful and unruly and what I call acting out of character. You got to be able to release that thing over on the Lord because the Lord said, well, he cares for you and he said he will sustain you. And I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, that parent that is dealing with a very challenging teen, a teen who they sometimes may not even recognize as their own child because of this out-of-character behavior. Could be father, uh, it could be an unclean spirit, it could be uh, just a, a something that's going on with the child. I pray in Jesus' name that you will open the doors of communication. That, that the parents and the child uh, can, can, can talk and come to a place of harmony, Lord God, and oneness, and that there will be openness and honesty. And, Father, that they will even pray together, that they will pray together and trust you, God, to bring wholeness and healing in that relationship. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a great day.